JCPenney department store is a chain of 850 full-line department stores spread all throughout the United States is currently in billions of dollars in debt. That's billion with a B. Currently, the company is facing a potential bankruptcy, which is currently very imminent for the company. In this video, we are going to be taking a brief look at their history and the issues that led them up to this moment, as well as a small experience from me of what it's like to shop at a JCPenney. Firstly, probably the most clear signal that JCPenney is in deep trouble is by taking a look at their stock price, which is currently only trading at 15 cents a share on the New York Stock Exchange. JCPenney is currently headquartered and based out of Plano, Texas. They currently operate around 850 locations nationwide, with most of their locations being within enclosed shopping malls, a few strip plazas, and a couple freestanding locations. They were founded on April 14, 1902 in Kemmerer, Wyoming by James Cash Penny and William Henry McManus. The name of the company is named after the founder, James Cash Penny. By around the year 1912, James Cash Penny opened and operated 34 stores within the Rocky Mountain states. It wasn't until around the year 1913 the company started to really take action by beginning the process of moving their headquarters to New York City in an effort to simplify buying, spending, and transportation of goods. By 1917, the company had operated 175 stores in 22 states. In 1924, the company opened its 500th store in Hamilton, Missouri, which was James Cash Penny's hometown. By the opening of the company's 1,000th store in 1928, its gross business had reached around $190 million. In 1940, Sam Walton began working at a J.C. Penny store in Des Moines, Iowa. By 1962, he would later go on to find the future retailer, Walmart which is clearly today a major competitor to J.C. Penney. By 1941, J.C. Penney had operated around 1,600 stores in all 48 mainland states. In 1963, J.C. Penney officially launched its mail order catalog business. It wasn't until around 1961 the company started to change their stores into full-line department stores. The bigger stores included appliances, sporting goods, garden merchandise, restaurants, beauty salons, portrait studios, auto parts, and auto centers, which would later be proven to be very efficient for the company. By 1973, however, it would mark the end of their growing number of stores, with a peak number of 2,053 stores. Between 1983 and 2009, J.C. Penney would make many changes, such as making several small acquisitions, selling one of its direct marketing insurance units for a whopping $1.3 billion, and launching its e-commerce site which would later to be proven to be very successful for the company, which had eventually reached a staggering $1 billion in revenue. However though, by 2007, this would mark as the end of the company maintaining its profitable status. And this is where things would start to get ugly. Around the late 2000s, the country started to experience an economic downturn. This affected several stores directed to middle class families, and JCPenney was a prime example of that. The company would lose several thousands of dollars in sales. The company between the years of 2011 and 2013 would see one of its biggest declines yet. Ron Johnson, who was affiliated with the Apple Company, became CEO of JCPenney. He took the time to come up with different ways to change the concept of JCPenney stores in order to attract more higher income and younger customers. The issue was, they did it in a rather quick process, and the changes brought the interest in customers to stop shopping at JCPenney, as most of their favorite brands were no longer carried and the store's layout changed. It was essentially a whole different store to them. They just thought that there was no real reason to need to go to JCPenney. They basically just threw the whole new concept and layout right into action without putting any extra thought into it. Even just thinking about coming up with the idea of a concept store to see what the customer nowadays wants. But instead, they just thought the changes needed to be made quickly. As a result, JCPenney saw a whopping 25% decrease in comparable store sales. 
and it almost killed the company. Ron Johnson was eventually fired and was taken over by Myron Ullman, who was CEO before Ron Johnson. He attempted to reverse the company to make it more profitable after the changes Johnson had put into action. However, that did not change, and sales just continued to fall even more. In 2013, JCPenney paid a whopping $313 million in interest expenses. In 2015, Marvin Ellison became the new CEO of JCPenney. At this point, they decided to bring back the concept of selling appliances in their stores. However, this was proven ineffective and made no change. In 2017, JCPenney announced one of its largest store closings in a while. Over 138 stores were announced to close, one of its largest mass store closings they ever made, in an effort to regain customers and save money. This made no change. In 2018, Marvin Ellison left to become the CEO of Lowe's. His position was later filled in by Jill Soltau. Problems would only continue for JCPenney as they would continue to be weighed down by debt, and they just haven't been able to make improvements to the company and compete with Amazon, Walmart, and other department store chains who are desperately clinging on to life. Things got much worse in March of 2020 as the COVID-19 pandemic forced many department stores to shutter in an effort to minimize the spread. However, the virus has already affected several companies to call or think about calling it quits. And JCPenney could be an example of that. Over the years, JCPenney has had many CEOs come and gone, and they just seem to haven't been able to make JCPenney profitable again at what it once was. On May 2, 2020, many news outlets reported that JCPenney was actively in the midst of a possible bankruptcy. They have currently been in talks with their creditors and trying to figure out ways to turn the company around. It is reported that the company is expected to announce a possible bankruptcy as soon as sometime this week. And things just seem to be getting worse and more bleak for JCPenney. And this is where we are now. In my opinion, JCPenney just expanded aggressively too much. They have too many stores and too many malls, and many of them are in dying and outdated malls. But on the small bright side, there are some good stores that they have that do well. Some stores are located in good areas, and some are even in thriving malls. So far, you've mostly heard me talk about JCPenney itself. You might be kind of wondering, why is it struggling? What is happening to it? That's exactly what I will share with you next. I haven't been able to provide a store tour at my local JCPenney store because of things going on with life and in response with the COVID-19 pandemic. I will provide a few images to show you with what I mean. Basically, my local JCPenney, um, when I shop there, it basically just, it feels very, very outdated. Um, the building was built in the 70s and it just, it just doesn't, you know, feel modern. It feels like maybe the last renovation they did was like in the 90s. and. It just doesn't feel modern and basically the selection to it is pretty outdated and just doesn't fit kind of modern criteria of what customers are looking for. Most of the clothing selections they have are a little bit outdated and simple and just don't really wow a lot of people. And the, the store's design, there's just not a lot of pizzazz and effort put into it. It's basically just like a uh, like there's not really a theme to it it's just like all slapped together in one specific place basically kind of like a puzzle piece if I were to kind of put it that way um, just like there's just not a lot of things in it to attract the customers it just looks very simple outdated and just not as upscale um, kind of like how Macy's is it's just not like that it's just lower not as um, not as updated. But don't get me wrong though, I still think it's a good store regardless. As for the company itself, other than its crippling debt, the other reason why it's very struggling right now is basically it hasn't been able to keep up with current times. Basically saying that they haven't been able to compete with other retailers like Walmart, Target, and mostly Amazon. They haven't been able to adjust to with what people are shopping now which is online shopping that's one of the other factors that's making JCPenney go down 
and they just haven't been able to adjust to what is happening. You know, they're just kind of staying at their old selves and just kind of stuck where they are right now. And um, they're not, you know, putting a lot of effort into trying to make the stores look nicer or, you know, adding more selections of what people want. People nowadays want selections that they want of more variety of products they want at lower prices like Walmart and Amazon basically stores that basically have lower cheap products than compared to um, quality products but pr probably not what they want at pennies so basically people are shopping at other stores regardless of pennies and JC Penny hasn't been able to come up with the idea or ways to fit in with what people are shopping now and are just kind of stuck in the hole that they are in right now and they haven't been able to get out of it. Other than that though, I think there are some good things that JCPenney has for both me and middle class families. Despite it being beneficial for me and middle class families, I like going there because the products that they have there I think are a little more durable than Walmart's prices. Even though they might be a little more expensive, I think that they're kind of a little bit comparable. I could be wrong though, but I like going there because they have good selection of products that I think are decent enough and good, even though I think sometimes that their products that they have for both men's, women's, and kids' clothing is a little um, half modern, half, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, but most of the time they have what I like. Like if I want black pants, they have a decent sized selection of black pants, and they have various sizes that I try on, and you know, rather than one size specific, they have various sizes for me to try on. So I kind of like the idea of them having a wide selection of products to choose from to try on. And that's one of the things that I like about them. And the prices are not that bad either. Although nowadays though, I feel like JCPenney is kind of the final straw for most shopping malls. Overall, I just really hope that JCPenney can find ways to make itself more salvageable and turn itself around. I really hope that they can find ways to stay in business as they seem to be almost, if not, one of the last major department stores to survive with all the things that have been happening with various companies, like Sears, Payless Shoe Source, Yonkers, Macy's, and other retailers. I overall think that they are a great store to shop at not only for me, but for several middle class families. And if they were to close all their stores, it would mark it as the final nail in the coffin for several malls throughout the United States. Godspeed, JCPenney. Anyways, I would like to say a big thank you to you guys for watching this video. It took a lot of time and effort to put in, and I would greatly appreciate it if you left a like and shared your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, make sure you subscribe, stay awesome, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. JC Penny makes Mom's Day with Mother's Day gifts of savings. All dazzling 14 karat gold. All the cotton sweaters she loves so much. All sheer toast pantyhose. Every vinyl handbag's on sale too. Plus the touch control microwave. The JC Penny Mother's Day sale. We do it a lot nicer than anyone. You're looking smarter than ever, JC Penny.